My name is Marius Lemons. I am from Olympia, Washington. My accent is not from Washington. I was born and raised in Germany. Um, I'm a family medicine doctor, but I'm double board certified in family medicine and um, holistic integrative medicine. I do both, uh, mix both. Um, and as I mentioned, I was born and raised in Germany. I um, started medical school there. Eventually, actually, get my diploma from Germany too. Um, but I was born in a, into a family of physicians. My parents were not, but I had several other family members, um, uncles and aunts, mostly and grand aunts and great grandfather and so on, that were physicians on both sides, um, including my aunt. Um, my grand, my, she was my grandmother's aunt. She went to school during um, wartime, and she was the only physician. Well, she and another woman were the only female physicians in medical school, and she had a rough time um, because they hated her because she was a woman, and they let her, you know showed her that every single day and but she um, it was very adversar adversarial and um, during wartime everyone was at the front as a, the male soldiers were at the front so she was she had a one-day residency and then she was the physician um, yeah it was crazy um, but she overcame all of that but she did eventually because she realized she had really no future in hospital medicine because it was always you know she was never going to get a higher position as a hospitalist because she was a woman. So she went into private practice and then everyone who came after her, my uncles and aunts, all went into the private practice to be pretty independent. And we're pretty happy they are. Uh, they're all, uh, she originally was a general surgeon, but everyone else, um, and she eventually became a primary care doctor, but she was in private practice. So did the rest of my family. So I always had those ideals and they all did really cool stuff. I remember my uncles and my aunts coming back um, Every year they went um, on medical missions and they all spoke, I don't know how many languages, and showed us the coolest slideshows and, and so on. And they're pretty serious people. I was a little bit intimidating. <laughs> but I realized there's a world out there um, that is uh, where medicine is really fun. Um, at the same time, I saw them and they were working back in the home village and how much influence they had um, on their patients, a positive influence that was completely beyond medicine completely beyond, um, I mean, pills and therapies, um, just for being there. And that, that was one of the most uh, important things I probably learned in medical school was that, because um, I always knew I wanted to be a family doc, and I did eventually become one. But I, I realized, I think the number is like 80% of things that we see in primary care are going to resolve by themselves in two weeks. Mm -hmm. But yet, you know, we have like thousands of medical visits a year, and they're good for something, and it's beyond pill pushing. But, um, so I started medical school in Germany. Germany has a very strange system and at that time it was relatively easy to get into medical school, but then they do everything to get you out of medical school. It was kind of the opposite as it is in the States. It has changed mm -hmm. now, but, um, so the, it's very abusive um, from the get-go. When I was a medical student, um, there was something wrong in the system that they over-calculated and there were 10,000 unemployed physicians in Germany. Um, there were a lot of physicians, taxi drivers and so on, and so the typical position you got at that time was a three-month contract, and usually a specialty you didn't want to be in, and it was highly abusive, so your superiors could do anything with you, I mean, uh, hit you, I, I mean, throw knives at you, uh, and it was completely okay, because you were happy you had a position as a doctor. Um, and so I realized very quickly into medical school that that wasn't really the thing that I wanted. Um, being abused like that. So I started orienting towards other possibilities and then I got um, a scholarship to uh, move to France. I had a medical school there for two years um, and it was the same thing. <laughs> they had uh, more of a physician shortage but it was so highly abusive in, in medical school. I mean it was a one surgical department where every single day all that the, the well, grand chef professor had to say were mean things, calling people words, yelling at um, students and residents in the OR. It was interesting and then eventually I um, was invited to study um, in the States, uh, moved to California and um, it was a little bit similar there. I was there only for a short time and I was under some protection from, from really great people there. It really, wasn't really that bad but then I got into residency in the States, and there we go again. Uh, I mean, I remember one ER doc, he always hit me on the shoulder when I gave the wrong answer. <laughs> or um, They were like, we had six main faculty, three of which um, were completely burned out themselves, completely, I mean, but they liked what they were doing, but they mm -hmm. couldn't do it anymore. And so like, they felt, and it seemed like they didn't feel like they were doing a good, good job if the resident wasn't crying, 
they, than the resident had not understood. There was every day there was a resident crying, but we're not talking about three-year-old children that not getting that chocolate. You know, it was about it was, they were adult, mature people, very bright. I mean, the, the residents I went to residency, but they were all very bright people. Um, but there they were crying because they didn't know the answer for some silly question. I, I don't know what it was about, or they missed something completely irrelevant. And I realized how much abuse there was, um, you know, throughout. I mean, you had to be self-abusive abusive in order to get your MCATs, go on to get into medical school, go through medical school, get into residency, get a good residency, go through residency. It's all abusive. It's all a huge. I mean, you have to be completely self-neglectant um, and. Um, I realized I, I didn't want that, yet I needed, you know, the board certification. I was only three years and I, um, I graduated from that. And then um, around that time, at the end of residency, I met Pamela and her then husband, Ken. And I was, you know, voicing my concerns about the future. Oh my God, this system is so abusive and what am I going to do? How am I going to find a job? Should I go into private practice? Uh, maybe a micro practice and so on. And, Ken at that time said, you know what, Marius, um, this is the United States, we have a huge physician shortage. Um, and at the same time, no matter what you do as a physician, you're going to get paid happily. I mean, there's lots of money in, in mm -hmm. medicine. Um, you can write your own ticket. In fact, the moment that you decide to go to private practice, there's a long line of people already lining up, like mm -hmm. one year ahead mm -hmm. of time. They're just waiting for you, particularly when you're a happy physician. Um, and so I was like, yeah, you can really write your own ticket. I mean, we do have I mean, we have huge loans and so on um, for medical school. There's always that issue, but really, we are paid well. Mm -hmm. We pay that off in a few years, and you know, these are government loans. This is not like loan sharks that we are dealing with. Mm -hmm. And um, and well, I, I did that. I tried micro practice at, uh, for a while. That was difficult for me. I wasn't mature enough, I think, at that time. And but I'm in an employed relationship now, and I'm extremely happy. But I'm extremely protective of myself. And mm -hmm. I started. I had a private practice, I had my site job, which is now my, main, my, my only job. I was rounding at the hospital and rounding at the chemical dependency unit and was, of course, very tired after yeah. a while. And I realized, I don't really need to do night shifts. I mean, who cares about like a few bucks more? Do I really need to have a second job at the hospital? Do I, you know? So I found myself that job where I just work four days a week. Um, I have no pager, no night shifts, no weekends, nothing. I just go home. And mm -hmm. um, when there's an emergency, we have an an urgent care where my patients go if they need something. And, um, and I really, I mean, I had to look for that job and I had to, you know, no, I don't want that pager back. And I lost my pager at some point and <laughs> never asked to get it back. Yeah. And, um, but it's very, very important because as a physician, that, that's my message. Um, you can do anything. Yeah. I mean, you really write your own ticket. You can be as happy as you want to. Yeah. Well, that's so um, extremely inspiring to hear. And, and one of the things that's been such a joy during this workshop for me is just your that attitude of you know things can be in a shambles or or be it a broken system as we know it is but you have this ever preserved hopefulness and and seem to be living that you know not only are you uh, talking about how hopeful and how um, how optimistic medicine can be but you are living that and it's interesting to me to hear you talk about the abuses of this path, and I'm curious what what kept you going. I mean, residents, you know, medical school after medical school. You know, it's something you went to two different medical schools and then a residency, and and it was the same abusive environment. How did you keep that alive? You know, that that vision of optimism. It's it's a really good question. I. For, for once, I was uh, probably, uh, I just was stupid. I didn't know. I mean, I didn't really realize it at the time. A lot of the realizations I made later on, and mm -hmm. which is part of it, and uh, that doesn't sound good. But I also knew it was finite. I mean, we just move on. It's a one month rotation or something like that. Um, it's a three year residency. It's, it's all finite. It's not the rest of my life. Yeah. I think it was a big realization. I mean, it's a big part of it. Absolutely. I think it sounds like that knowing something has a determined end. Uh, and I think potentially the fact that you had had these elders, these family members who at a young age to you had presented uh, a vision of medicine that was free, you know, and that you could find this thing that was interesting and involved and really serving people. Um, and you knew that you kind of just had to get through the gauntlet to get to that larger place. Um, I'm curious what you, how you see medicine now and leaving this workshop you know, it sounds like you're you're very comfortable in your job and very happy where you are. But um, what it, what is your ideal vision of medicine for yourself or for others who may not be in such a, a fortuitous position mm. as yourself? Yeah, 
So, you know, I mean, I really want to be there for, for patients. I think my realization here is that I, I don't think I will be an effective physician if I'm in a bad position. Mm. I don't think, I think my patients like it that I usually come into the room whistling. And <laughs> it's, it's, it's better because I'm so happy at what I do. I open the door and I'm, I'm, all, I'm all ready. And I look in the eyes and I wait for them. I'm efficient at the work that I do. I'm, but um, I'm there for them and you know, to be a role model, you know. Yeah, I think you need to get some exercise in your life. I bicycle. You know, mm -hmm. Why don't you bicycle? You know, live in my neighborhood. And um, th these kind of things, because uh, a lot of people neglect themselves. I mean, we heard the numbers about phys physician suicide and um, you know, heart attack risk is pretty high in mm -hmm. a physician because they abuse themselves and there's no way that they're going to do a good job mm -hmm. taking care of patients. I mean, like a smoking heart surgeon, what, what the <laughs> heck, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess the other thing, one other question I have is if you could have done anything differently, would you? If you could go back, would you make any, any different decisions? No, I mean, no, I'm perfectly happy how things went. I was just extremely lucky. Most of these major decisions, I mean, just the sheer fact that I ended up in France, then ended up in the States, ended mm -hmm. up in residency here in the Northwest, I, I had no idea what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I, it just happened to be the best decisions I've ever made. I, so I, and I didn't make them really that consciously, but yeah. no, I'm, I'm happy with that. It all turned out good. That's great. Um, is there any question that I didn't ask that you want to answer? Anything else I want to say? No, I've talked so much. I <laughs> <laughs> well, we will keep listening as long as you would like to talk. Mm -hmm. But um, is there anything else you want to say? No. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.